thank you to the Philippine APEC Study Center Network, uh, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Asian Institute of Management, and Conrad Dadenauer Stiftung for the invitation to be part of this forum. Um, so uh, the uh, moderator already mentioned the title uh, of my presentation. It's about enabling um, system shifts. I'm going to try to make this uh, pretty quick. I'm going to speak fast, uh, but let me know if you want me to speak a little slower uh, so I could uh, make uh, the time uh, shorter. Um, next slide, please. Um, so this is what I'm going to be speaking about. Um, it's uh, introduced Greenpeace a bit. Um, and I want to talk about uh, how a genuine circular economy isn't compatible within a system that's based on infinite growth um, and how lifestyle changes aren't the key to the consumption side of the circular economy. Because uh, uh, we look at circular economy um, and uh, a lot of companies always frame them in the context of um, it's still about uh, maximizing profits. It's still about um, infinite growth, uh, but it's totally not compatible. Um, and uh, at the other side, when we talk about uh, what are the consumer's responsibilities uh, within uh, a circular economy, um, uh, we believe in Greenpeace that it's a lot more than, than just lifestyle changes. Um, and the last topic I'm going to tackle is how do we get to a slow circular economy? Uh, which is what uh, we're promoting as Greenpeace. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so Greenpeace um, is a campaigning organization founded in 1971, present in 55 countries. Um, Greenpeace Philippines uh, was founded in March 2000. Um, so we're a campaigning organization. Um, and we we uh, do peaceful creative confrontation uh, to uh, make solutions happen. We investigate and expose environmental problems um, and also so, uh, show solutions. Uh, so our vision is a green, just, and peaceful future. Um, and our core principles are nonviolent. So when we have um, creative uh, actions, uh, we call them creative actions. Uh, these are nonviolence and all our uh, activists are trained in nonviolence, um, and uh, we believe in um, civic uh, civic movements uh, and how they can change uh, systems um, in society. Uh, our other core principle is independence. So um, Greenpeace is uh, one of the few uh, nonprofits that do not accept money from corporations as well as from government. So we're able to do uh, what we do without uh, being limited, without being beholden. Uh, to these entities. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so um, I was actually pleasantly surprised when I read that one of the references in the background papers for this event. Um, it's this article in the WEF website. Um, and what stood out to, uh, to me in the article uh, was the Ninars framework, uh, which I believe also illustrates the hierarchy of preferred actions in a truly circular economy. Uh, so that chart, uh, I'll show the chart later. Um, it's from, uh, you see the, the least preferred actions at the bottom and the most preferred actions that actually uh, trigger a circular economy at the top. Um, and then um, the article also recognizes that recycling is not a solution. Uh, so this recognition um, is, uh, I think, very, very important uh, because uh, we've seen how the support of recycling uh, the support that recycling gets right now is a distraction to real systems change uh, because it's an end of pipe uh, approach. Um, and it poses a very big risk to real circular economy solutions. Uh, the third thing that stood out um, is the acknowledgement that we actually need systems change. Um, change from the quest for infinite growth, uh, the take make waste linear model, which has treated the planet as an infinite resource and an infinite trash can, as one economist put it. Uh, for me, these are reflective of elements in what a genuine uh, circular economy looks like. Um, but before we go deeper into that discussion, I wanted to debunk some common notions about the circular economy that touches upon production and consumption. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so these are the uh, two things. Um, so um, currently, in a lot of venues, you talk about uh, circular economy within the current economic system of profit at all costs. Um, and we also talk about circular economy and the role of consumers as, you know, um, you have to be, uh, you, lifestyle changes will save the day. Um, but uh, this is not, uh, for us, uh, it is not reflective of what actually uh, is uh, sh or should be happening to lead us 
uh, to a genuine um, circular economy. Um, so this morning, actually, we were discussing the plastics problem, which looks like uh, the graph in the next slide, please. Uh, so if you look at this slide, um, you'll see that uh, plastics pollution um, is uh, really uh, just spiraling upwards. Uh, from 2000 to 2020, um, it doubled, right? Um, and so did waste. And only 9% was recycled. Um, and this trend of ballooning uh, plastic production is happening in a world where policies meant to solve the pollution crisis are being corralled to the lowest section of the hierarchy of actions that we could do with materials. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is uh, the nine Rs, um, and it's a hierarchy because uh, you can see that uh, once the actions at the bottom are actually more linear and the actions at the top are more circular. Um, and if you look at uh, recycling um, and recovery, um, it's at the bottom. Um, but a study says that this is where most corporate action internationally and policies are actually focused. Uh, there are less policies that are focused in actually enabling a circular economy. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the study was done by five gyres. It was published in PLOS One, PLOS One. Uh, let's just call it the plastic smog uh, study. Um, and it observed that um, international policies on plastics are fragmented. They don't address the entire life cycle of plastics. Um, they favor business-oriented solutions. So the, a lot of the policies are pro-business interest rather than actually addressing the plastics pollution problem. Um, they lack specificity and they do not uh, include measurable targets. Next slide, please. Uh, much of these are also voluntary. Um, and the study says that increased production of virgin plastics will increasingly undermine circular economic principles um, and so forth. Uh, so it's really production uh, that is driving, uh, driving the pollution problem. We see these flaws also. Next slide, please. We see these flaws um, in the EPR law in the Philippines. Uh, so a lot of uh, nonprofit waste groups in the Philippines um, actually uh, asked for a veto uh, of the EPR law because uh, we feel that this is a very weak law uh, that would actually not uh, promote the circular economy because it favors business-oriented solutions and it focuses on the lowest initiatives in the hierarchy of action. So it's about it's more about disposal in cement kilns, recycling. Um, and so-called plastic neutrality, which is just uh, companies will be mandated to collect trash um, and they can burn them. Um, so it doesn't stop the problem uh, at the source. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and uh, all this is happening um, in a world uh, where uh, we also have a lot of uh, marketing strategies uh, for the sake of profit and growth. Uh, so if companies have created electronic goods that are programmed for obsolescence, that are irreparable, unrecyclable, so sachets, uh, all sachets uh, that are multi-layer are completely unrecyclable um, and fast fashion. Um, so you're told, we're told to change our uh, the designs of our clothes every year. Um, phone manufacturers tell us to buy new phones every two years, um, and so do our phone networks. Um, so it's a world where uh, we're asked, we're constantly told to buy new products. Um, so in this forum, we're discussing the role and responsibilities of consumers within a circular economy, adopting the 9R circular economy framework. Um, but for me, the question we need to be asking is, uh, next slide, please. Uh, Within this current system of unbridled production, where policies either favor industry or are lacking, and where marketing is perniciously designed to get people to keep buying things they don't need, what can people do to help enable a genuine circular economy? Because uh, the odds um, seem to be stacked against people. Uh, so the notion of uh, consumer choice, uh, I feel, is overrated. Um, in many ways, um, considering people as consumers, um, I use the word people rather than consumers, um, because when we call people consumers, you only look at one aspects, one aspect of an individual's decision-making capacity, and that's their participation in a very limiting market system controlled by corporations 
and where in reality they have very little power. Uh, so within the system, we're also calling that consumer choices, you know, changing our lifestyles can change a system. We're told that all this production uh, pollution exists because we didn't make the right choices. We didn't do the right thing. Um, we're told that, you know, um, solution, don't use plastic, stop buying sachets, recycle. And we're led to believe that all these things are supposed to make a difference, supposed to change a system. In a world where con companies aren't reducing plastic production and are lobbying politicians not to pass single-use plastic bans, um, and where government put the interests of corporations before people. Um, so, um, kanina actually narinig natin na parang um, part of the problem is walang disiplina. Totoo. Um, in in many cases, um, hindi tayo maruno magtapon. Uh, pero even if lahat tayo may disiplina magtapon. Kung yung mga corporations keep on the track of producing plastic, like in the graph that we saw earlier, na it doubles, it doubled every 20 years. The predictions about how much it will double more in the, in the next 10 years is kind of dire. Kahit anong disiplina ng tao, hindi natin mapipigilan yung plastic pollution. Um, kasi we have to turn off the tap. So bakit, in that context, bakit ang mga tao sinasabihan na wala kayong disiplina, pero yung mga corporations, Hindi natin sila sinasabihan na kailangan nilang magkadisiplina para i-reduce nila yung plastic production, di ba? So the burden um, is actually uh, being thrown into the shoulders of people. Um, and these are all meant to obscure the fact that what we should be doing as citizens uh, is to challenge these systems perpetrated uh, by these corporations so they can continue profiting at the expense of the environment and people. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. On the other side, um, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, so um, if you look at these slides, um, they're just examples of how uh, the burden has been put on um, consumers. So there's a Shell, uh, Shell CEO in 2019. Um, he's saying that um, there, we have no choice but to keep extracting oil in a world where there's climate change because uh, people are demanding it. Next slide, please. Um, and in this slide, uh, you can see that um, what uh, Nestle says, consumer ha consumers have a vital role to play in improving recycling rates. Okay, And we will engage them through educational campaigns. Uh, so Nestle uh, has not uh, reduced, uh, has not made any commitments to reduce their plastic production. And yet they're telling people uh, to improve your recycling. Okay? Um, and next slide, please. Um, and this uh, other example, um, you can see um, this quote uh, that I've pulled out um, on the side. Um, it's an article by Reuters, an investigative one that they did in Sri Lanka, the Philippines, um, and other countries. Um, in 2019, um, the head, uh, one of the heads of Unilever uh, said that sachets are evil because you cannot recycle it. Uh, but at the same time, this report found out that Unilever is also uh, doing a campaign to stop uh, to stop policymakers from approving single-use plastic bans, and they said because poor people need it. Uh, so that whole narrative. Uh, next slide, please. That whole narrative of you know, pardon, this whole pollution problem is the fault of people uh, needs to be kind of exposed uh, because. Um, as long as production rates are going up and people did not produce those uh, plastic, those trash that's coming out of those factories, as long as production rates are coming up, whatever we do um, in terms of lifestyle change actually uh, won't uh, make a dent um, in this horrible system. Um, so what I'm saying is that um, when we look at uh, the role of citizens within a circular economy, it's actually, uh, we should actually look at civic engagement um, over consumer choice. Uh, so consumer, changing consumer behavior is not a bad thing, uh, but it, it, it won't make a dent um, in the real world. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, so I just pulled out this slide because it's um, a funny quote that I saw on Twitter uh, back during the early days of the pandemic. Um, and it just shows how, how it is a system uh, that is asking us to buy things that we don't need, uh, that is driving uh, pollution, driving the climate crisis. Um, and uh, what, what 
I, I'm taking out of this is that we should question our fixation, the fixation of the global economy of uh, corporate uh, strategies on infinite growth in a finite planet um, and understand uh, that, you know, talking about growth while talking about um, circular economy um, doesn't work. Um, infinite growth is not part of a circular economy. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what does system change uh, look like um, in the context of a circular economy? Um, so what we're advocating in Greenpeace um, is a slow circular economy. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, first we have to slow the flow um, and close the loop. Uh, so it's mindful ec ecological designs that enable sustainable ecosystems for all of us. Um, it's less consumption. Uh, so we believe that our economy needs to be restorative and generative. Uh, not just, you know, um, it can be a circle, but it's just cycling more and more resources around faster and faster. It's not going to get us anywhere. We need to slow down the, the circle um, and close the loop. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so what does that look like? Um, uh, so I'm not going to read out the slides, um, but uh, we believe it should be simple, input-oriented. Um, it must understand the value of resources. Um, it must be with purpose, okay? The way that products are designed right now, a lot, we go online um, where the government is trying to promote um, online uh, on e-commerce and so forth. But uh, a lot of the stuff you find um, in e-commerce sites, aside from the packaging, is really uh, things you don't need, like, you know, um, USB mug warmers, <laughs> which you get for Christmas um, and you don't use, right? Um, and then you have uh, products that are multi-use, um, designed globally, but manufactured locally. Next slide, please. Um, and it needs to uh, prevent and reduce environmental impact across the entire life cycle of products. Uh, um, one, one of these um, is the elimination of all toxic chemicals and pollution. Uh, this is another reason why sachets are unrecyclable. Uh, one is um, they're multi-layered. Um, and the other thing is uh, they use a lot of dyes. Uh, and some of those dyes and some of their uh, plastic softeners are actually pretty toxic, especially when burned. Uh, so when you send sachets to an incinerator or a cement kiln, which is promoted here in the Philippines, but we believe is uh, against the Clean Air Act, uh, you're actually releasing a lot of the toxic chemicals into the air. So a part of what the circular uh, economy looks like need to be the redesign of things um, in terms of distribution, but also of uh, their components. Um, next slide, please. Uh, thank you. Um, and um, it needs to be open source. Uh, so things must be for things to be repairable, um, open source um, and transparency um, is uh, pretty vital. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, ah, uh, sorry, previous slide, please. Um, so is the circular economy already happening, the slow circular economy? Um, it does in little bits, but it's not supported by government policies. Uh, so you have repair, the repair economy in the Philippines, for example, is pretty big compared to um, other countries in Western countries where things are, they dispose of their electronics once they're broken, they don't repair them. In the Philippines, we do a lot of repair um, and so forth. Uh, we see them in community pantries, for example, that's an example of a, a sharing economy uh, that is part of what a slow circular economy can look like. Um, in other countries, there are limits to advertising. They actually have policies that limit advertising uh, because of the pernicious effect that advertising does have on people. Um, and then um, there are mandatory take-back schemes, um, and there are also single-use plastic bags um, in other countries. Um, so um, as I said earlier, a truly slow circular economy will require transparency, accountability, collaboration, um, but it also... Um, that, that kind of economy is going to permeate, uh, is going to reflect on our social systems um, and financial services uh, because it's not built on profit at all costs. It's not built on um, profit before the welfare of people or before the welfare of the environment. Uh, so um, it, it can produce a different kind of future uh, for all of us uh, where um, creating wealth is in the service of the common good uh, rather than for um, just amassing wealth uh, for 1% of the population who control like 1% also of all the corporations in the world. Um, next slide, please. 
Um, so what needs to be done? Um, so corporations must drastically, uh, for, for plastic pollution at least, uh, they have to drastically reduce plastic pollution. It, they need to turn off the tap on plastic production um, while investing in reuse and refill, um, go back to uh, alternative delivery systems. Otherwise, um, we'll be swamped with so much plastic um, that uh, they're just going to collect um, and put in cement kilns for us to breathe the dirty air uh, or turn into um, some of the projects are uh, they're turned into school desks, uh, but it actually requires a lot of energy um, and melting plastic also releases uh, toxic chemicals. So it's it's really not a solution. Uh, the solution must be to reduce um, and governments need to hold corporations accountable um, because corporations aren't going to do this on their own. Um, their, their primary motivation is really to give value to their stockholders, to maximize profit. Uh, so they're not going to do this on their own unless government sets very strong regulations for reduction. Um, so uh, they need to mandate actions higher up the nine R's hierarchy, not at the bottom. Um, so. Uh, maybe one call for the government is to uh, to uh, pass um, the single-use plastic ban um, here in the Philippines um, and also to review um, the EPR law, which is currently just focused on uh, recovery um, and recycling. Um, and beyond changing habits for citizens, uh, they could be part of uh, the systems change by mobilizing and participating, um, uh, being on the table with lawmakers, making sure that their voices are heard, um, being active in their local governments for organizations that ban plastics um, and so forth. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So um, that's just to say that um, it's not a pipe dream um, because in a lot of history has shown us that social movements do change the world. It's why uh, women right now can vote um, and so forth. So um, it's actually possible for us to change uh, this current uh, exploitative um, system that we have um, in order to lead us to a better, a reimagined world. Next slide, please. Uh, where uh, people are central um, in uh, the economic, social, and political systems. Uh, so I'll end there. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for the time.